Okay, just wanted to say something quick about a U.S.-China war. You know, first of all, there's more and more talk about this. Uh, it's almost like the more people talk about it, the more it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. Um, there seems to be both among Democrats and among Republicans a real desire. As I've said this before, and I'll say this again and maybe do a whole show about this, a real desire for a new Cold War. And, and, but what is starting to really sink in is the possibility of a hot war, a possible, real possibility of a war over Taiwan. Um, and uh, the United States is trying to shift resources to the Pacific. We've talked about that. We've talked about the Navy. We've talked about submarines and aircraft carriers. Um, but there, I did see a, a story in Foreign Affairs um, yesterday or today that uh, basically uh, documents uh, the war games that the United States has played um, you know, assuming a war in Taiwan and assuming the United States gets involved and assuming even that South Korea and, J and Japan and, and, and maybe Australia uh, get involved. The reality is that the United States, and this is a problem that has become evident with the war in Ukraine, the United States no longer has the manufacturing capacity, weapons manufacturing capacity, to meet the demand of a war. Um, in the war games, the United States runs out of, uh, of um, uh, smart ballistic missiles, um, anti-ship missiles, which are going to be crucial because one of the key aims of the United States is to knock out the ships that are, that are moving uh, troops and, and supplies and ammunition and tanks and whatever from mainland China to Taiwan. And, and the goal of the U.S. Navy will be uh, to knock out as many of those ships before they reach Taiwan as possible. Well, the United States runs out of ammunition for uh, anti-ship uh, smart ballistic missiles within a week. And given that the, uh, the, the, the uh, arena of war is 5,000 miles away from California, seven, maybe 7,000 miles away from California, anyway, some ridiculous amount of miles away from California, not only would these uh, new bombs have to be uh, built um, very, very fast, they then would have to be shipped to, I guess, Hawaii, or move to Hawaii very, very quickly, load it up again on submarines or on, on uh, destroyers or aircraft carriers or, or, or the kind of ships that carry these kind of missiles, and then, and then move closer to the arena and deploy it. Just saying that takes a long time. I mean, imagine what actually doing it, and of course the bottleneck right now, beyond the distance, is manufacturing capabilities. So, and this is what irks me, and, and again, this is where I'll go after Congress, instead of talking about industrial policy and micromanaging and, and, and uh, why doesn't the United States focus on its national, truly national defense and, and, and build industrial capacity, build the kind of capacity to build the, the, the weapon systems that we actually need to defend ourselves? The Chinese have and, and are doing so, even though their defense budget, even though their defense budget is something like 20% of what ours is, of the United States is, they have the capacity to build large numbers of missiles. They have the capacity to build weapons very, very fast. It seems that we don't. Now, I suspect that in actual war, it'll turn out that we have a massive technological advantage, that maybe we don't have the numbers, but we have the effectiveness. Uh, there's a lot of talk about the fact that, uh, you know, China uh, has a lot of air defense systems and will prevent American airplanes from, from, being, from being useful in the, in the Taiwan Straits. I think, I, I don't believe that. I think the United States probably has the capabilities to dismantle and to make ineffective the Chinese def air defense systems. And I think very quickly the United States could command uh, the air above uh, the Taiwanese Straits. Uh, I think it's, it, the, the Chinese technology is overrated. But I do worry just about sheer quality, quantity of weaponry, uh, sheer quality, quantity of, of missiles and, and, uh, and other weapons. And I do worry about Chinese hypersonic missiles. I do worry about the fact that this is very close to Chinese, China and very far from the U.S., uh, delivery of weapons, supply chain management, all of that is very, very, going to be very, very difficult. And I worry about the fact that my primary worry, my number one worry, is the fact that I don't get a sense that there is a real strategic thinking going on and that there is a commitment to acting on that strategic thinking. I mean, I mean, the defense budget is bloated. We spend way too much money on nonsense. Among other things, we spend a lot of money on all kind of political correct BS 
uh, of bringing woke into the military. We need to get rid of all of that. We need to focus our efforts on what is actually, absolutely, unequivocally necessary for national defense. We need to get troops home from the hundreds of, from, from the dozens and dozens and dozens of countries we have troops in. We need to refocus our efforts to what a war over Taiwan would look like. I, I think that a war over Taiwan is, for now, in our, in, in our uh, strategic national interest to defend Taiwan, not to go to war for Taiwan, but to defend Taiwan. Uh, because of, of chip technology. So uh, we need to be able to do that. If that's our strategic national interest, we need to be able to do that. To do that, we need to orient all of our efforts around that. We need to be able to contain Russia uh, in Europe, uh, and I think we do that by shifting the burden to our European allies and demanding that they uh, bear most of the burden of the Ukraine war, and by shifting our resources, our thinking, our efforts, our navy, and, and uh, and our uh, uh, weapons production to the Pacific, uh, to, the, to, to the Pacific area, and, and boosting our productive capabilities for weapons that we believe would be necessary, not for the last war, but for the next war, for, for, for war in the Pacific. And that would require uh, a, a robust Navy, and it's going to require long-distance ballistic missiles, and it's going to require both hypersonic weapons, but even more important than hypersonic weapons, it's going to require uh, weapons they can defend against hypersonic uh, uh, missiles that both the Russians and the, uh, and the Chinese have. Thank you for listening or watching the Iran Brooks Show. If you'd like to support the show, we make it as easy as possible for you to trade with me. You get value from listening. You get value from watching. Show your appreciation. You can do that by going to iranbookshow.com slash support, by going to Patreon, subscribe star, locals, and just making a appropriate contribution uh, on any one, of those, uh, any one of those channels. Also, if you'd like to see the Iran Book Show grow, please consider sharing our content. And of course, subscribe. Press that little bell button right down there on YouTube so that you get an announcement when we go live. And for you, those of you who are ready subscribers and those of you who are ready supporters of the show, thank you. I very much appreciate it.